Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Hey, 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 Carl Bryan coming at you. Business coaching secrets. I'm here without my boy, a road dog. He's got a commitment with his daughter that smells a lot like soccer. He's got a, a daughter who's an elite soccer player and road dog is pretty heavily involved. So being a fantastic father that he is, that's what he's doing. So what I've done and what he instructed me to do, I said, road dog, give me something to talk about. And he said, you know what? haven't done this in a while and you should go to Old Faithful and just talk about the foundation of building a six, multiple six um, figure and seven, ultimately seven figure um, coaching company, which basically there's three steps to that. So that would be lead generation, conversion and fulfillment. So I'm just going to riff folks and we're going to see how it's going to go. And with that, before I even riff, I want to, um, something I was listening to on the weekend, um, it was kind of like it was Tony Robbins, by the way, which, by the way, I love Tony Robbins and some people do and some people don't. And a lot of people think it's really cool to kind of rail against him, which I have no issue with whatsoever. You know, and they'll say that, you know, probably, you know, there's a lot greater thinkers um, out there than Tony Robbins that you could, you know, follow, learn from, etc. And I would agree with that. Right. Let's just go Eckhart Tolle as an example. Right. Uh, the power of now. Uh, Carl Jung, and just like so, so many other higher level thinkers, and I would agree with that, right? But I can also tell you that in my opinion, and only my opinion, and clearly I'm great for you to have your own, um, I think Tony Robbins has some great stuff. Anyways, what he said, something to this effect, um, is he was talking about getting focused, and he said, look, it's it's a lot like driving a Ferrari down the highway or on a racetrack at 200 miles an hour, right? Put your, close your eyes, think about it for a sec. Put yourself in that situation. Please don't go and do it. That would be a bad idea if you're not trained. But I want you to think about just how alert you would be, how dialed in you would be. Um, kids could be in the back playing and tooting around. The wife could be telling you how to drive and some things that you're doing wrong. Or, or the wifey might be driving and the husband is taking that role of telling her how to drive and to do this and to do that. But I really think that if you were going 200 miles an hour, you would zone all of those distraction out and you would be like totally dialed in, right? Um, if that were to be the case, uh, I want you to think about that as you build your six, multiple six or seven figure coaching company, get yourself in that, you know, in that zone. Think of uh, Zuckerberg. When I think of that, I think of Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, the movie Social Network, or again, there's all kinds of stories out there on Zuck when he was building Facebook. And by the way, you might love Zuck and you might love Facebook and you might hate Zuck and you might hate Facebook. Completely irrelevant for the point. I want you to picture him with his headphones on, dialed in. Why does he put his headphones on? Because he's trying to dial out all of the distractions. He's sitting at his computer with the focus dialed in at the level, you know, focused like someone who's driving down the highway at 200 miles an hour. My question is, if you got that dialed in on lead generation, what could you accomplish? If you got that dialed in on getting a 24, 36, you know, 60, you know, $5,000 a month, $60,000 client, if you got that dialed in, that focused, I bet you could come up with some unbelievable ideas. And you, you don't need to do it for five hours. You don't need to do it for 24 hours, 48 hours, which he was pretty famous for dialing and, you know, dialing in and not sleeping for multiple um, days whilst he built Facebook and was, you know, dialed in on code. Um, wouldn't be necessary. If you just did it for 15 minutes, I think you might be a little bit further ahead than where you currently are. Maybe, maybe not, could be wrong. But if you did it for a half an hour, you did it for an hour, if you did it for two hours, if you, you know what I mean? If you did it for two hours, I just wonder how many amazing ideas you could come up with and how impactful that would be. I don't know. That might be a good metaphor to get this going. If you were going to really dial in on your coaching company and approach, again, 
the framework to get yourself to six, multiple six, or ultimately seven figures, what would that look like, right? Um, and remember, you, you know, ultimately money is not the measure um, I do understand how it's the obvious one and it's the one that stands out, but ultimately your freedom, right, is what I think, you know, it's it's not, money is not the measuring stick, the level of freedom is, um, that's for you, that's for me, that's for your coaching client, especially that high-end coaching clients that's paying you, you know, up, you know, 60 grand a year um, and sticking around with retention and, you know, anxious for your next call. Um, you know what I mean? That's uh, uh, that guy, that gal is looking for freedom, right? And, and remember, and then as I say this, the concern is that, oh, gosh, I, you know, I struggle with that. I've struggled with that in the past. I've let myself down. You, you didn't fail. You fell down, right? You didn't fail. You fell over, right? When you learned to walk, that's the experience you had. When your daughter, when your son, with your nephew, um, with your niece, when they learned to walk. OK, again, they fell over and we didn't give up. We got them up, dusted them off, and then they did it again, did it again, did it again. And, you know, they just finished a marathon. Right. Um, anyway, so I think that's really, really important. Um, as I say that and I just kind of picture that you know, the focus of somebody going 200 miles an hour, uh, be easy to fall off. Why? You, you, no doubt that's that's not rocket science by any stretch. And you've thought of something similar or exactly that. Why haven't you done it? And it's like, we just had like an unbelievable pre-show um, where I just opened a couple of folks, Frankie and Susan specifically, and they were just talking about how Susan was talking about how her father, uh, I just said to her, she was talking about a business failing. And I said, you know, paint me a picture of how dad feels, how mom feels, how the couple feels, how the marriage is going, how the kids feel. And she said, well, Carl, I could do better than that. But like, I experienced it as a kid and I watched my dad's business fail. And then she was talking about how, and I, and I just kind of said, like, how did that feel watching your, your dad fail? And, you know, in a nutshell, right, paraphrasing here, but it was bloody horrific for her to watch her dad fail right in front of her, right? And, and you could only imagine how it felt for mom. And by the way, they didn't split up. And I immediately said, congratulations, your parents had an amazing marriage, right? Because believe me. I, the story, and it was it was pretty damn good one. And that this wasn't a this this was you know a roller coaster and a pretty you know difficult dynamic for dad. Um, that's a strong woman who stood by him. So full props um, for them for her, um, you know, being the daughter to watch that and have that kind of role models. But the bottom line is, that, and then we opened up Frankie and his brother basically had a business fail. Uh, he didn't commit. He didn't kill himself, but I thought that was what he was heard. And he said, no, well, what happened is he hit the bottle um, and, and basically all but gave his life away, as I think the words that he said, right? Um, and then his son-in-law did uh, commit suicide, by the way. So again, um, and, I, and I just said, gosh, guys, like this, uh, you're talking to the poster child. Again, my big brother committed suicide. My mother then drank herself to death. I had a front row seat of the entire thing as a 16, 17, 18, 19 year old. Not real enjoyable. So, okay, all that to say, okay, tearjerker for what? When you knock on the door, when you run the event, you do the joint venture, when you call the business owner and get them on the phone, that's why you push, right? That's why you keep going. That's why when the person tells you to buzz off, yeah, I got to tell you, the person that will tell you to F off, I actually did a YouTube video on this. The person that will tell you to F off when you call them is the same person that in a week in a different dynamic will have one of those one hour conversations and you'll be like a long lost brother, a long lost sister to them. And you'll have one of those unbelievably engaging conversations that you just felt was meant to be. They felt was meant to be. <clears throat> and they end up signing up on, you know, signing on as that long term, you know, as that high end client that stays long term. Right. Why? The emotions of somebody will tell you to F off is the emotions of somebody who's looking for some help that needs some help. Right. That's where it comes from. So, OK, that to say you want to do this, um, you want to have this success. You want to have this incredibly focused approach where you're driving at 200 miles an hour and you've tried it in the past and you haven't been able to follow through. Um, why? Well, let me tell you, one of the most important things you can do is get a pen, piece of paper, and write down a list of reasons why you've got to follow through, why you've got to be successful, 
why when you don't feel like it, like when you don't go to the gyms, when you got to go to the gym, right? When you don't feel like, you know, you know what I mean? Like when that candy's calling more than ever, this is when you need to resist it at the highest level, right? All diets work until seven, you know, till seven, eight o'clock at night, right? So you gotta, like when I do a fast, right? I've done, you know, multiple, if, if you've never done a fast, I highly recommend it. Try it, speak to your doctor first, not medical advice here by any stretch. Did I need to say that? Don't know. But anyways, um, try a fast. When I do a fast, I'm human on day two, I get a little hungry, right? I've done it enough times now that I can kind of skate through and I know that it's going to be easier. But what I do on day two and day one, whenever, when I feel like having a bite of the chocolate bar or going and having a sandwich, uh, you know, shoving a carb in my mouth, um, what I do is I list my reasons of why I need to follow through on my fast, right? You know, children, the wedding, being able to touch my toes, being able to dance at that wedding, things that I want to accomplish, you know, my hundredth birthday, the do to do to do. Like that, that's what I've got on that paper. And magically, guess what? The urge for the chocolate bar goes away. You know, like when Okay, said differently, um, and I may have said this last week or the week before, can't remember, I think I did, but one of those things I think you need to hear continually. Um, when you're in a low vibrational, um, what am I, when, you, when, when you're, let me just say it this way, when you're low, you see problems and challenges. When you're high, as in not high, right? <laughs> not high right? Not suggesting any of this sort. Um, when you're like high though, you know what I mean? Like a high vibration, you're going to see opportunities and solutions, right? Well, how do you get stand up like Superman, right? Um, make those phone calls, make the list of why, revisit the, when you revisit, when you, you know, go through your whys, I'm going to believe if you've done it properly and you read through them at the end of that, you're feeling pretty bulletproof, right? About following through on the fast, get into that vibration. You're going to see opportunities and solutions. What I'm really trying to do is not talk about fasting, but your business lead generation, conversion, fulfillment, getting the clients, supporting the clients, having them pay you for a very, very long time. I want you to get into a high, when you go to the gym, are you in a high vibration state or a low vibration state? We both know the answer, no doubt, right? And yes, there are anomalies, but let's um, let's be realistic here. You go to the gym, you're going to be feeling significantly better. Okay, question. Did you go to the gym today? Because you agree with me, but I want to push, right? Did you go to the gym yesterday? Did you go to the gym the day before that? Did you go to the gym all of last week, the week before, the week before? And what are you going to do tomorrow? Are you going to make the excuses from a low vibration or are you going to come up with the opportunities, the solutions, close the loop, solve the problem from a high vibrational state? I'm trying to come up with something, a better way of saying that high. But anyways, not going to happen. And and remember, so lead generation is kind of where I'm, I'm going here as a starting point. But if you introduce me, the business owner is no different. The chiropractor, the dentist, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, right? Well, you ask them, what do you want? And they're going to say something to the effect of leads, right? Well, my question is, why do they want leads? And then the answer is because they want clients. Why do they want clients? They want revenue. Why do they want revenue? Because they don't want revenue. They want profit. Why do they want profit? Because they want cash. Why do they want cash? Because they want freedom. And by the way, why do they want freedom? Because they want to have options. Like, and by the way, you will define freedom and I will define freedom and Road Dog will define freedom differently. Very important. You drill down on what that means. But what I just said, and for you, for me, for Road Dog, uh, definitely for your high-end client, they want leads to get clients. They want clients to get revenue. They want revenue to get profit. They want profit to get cash. They want cash to get freedom. So they buy advertising to get freedom. And then I would ask you, does it actually get it? And I think that instinctively, you know the answer, and it is probably not a ridiculously high percentage of the time, and I'm going to call it 95% of the time, they buy the leads, Google, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, the baseball stadium, um, you know, at the cafe, it's, it's on the screen, the online directory from the digital marketer, et cetera. They buy the ads to get freedom. And my question is, do they actually get those, you know, do they get that freedom? 
And again, no. And then why? Because it wasn't about the leads. It was about the business model, right? Like, let me see their business model. Let me see their offer. Let me see their upsell. Let me see their downsell. Let me see their cross sell. Let me see their packages. Let me see their market dominating position. Let me see how they're managing their company. Let me see the number of staff. Let me see the training of that staff. Let me see the communication between that staff, you know, in between the staff and then the, you know, the closed loop, like by way of how it feeds back to the, the owner, the founder, right? And as I say all that, I think you could probably agree that the business is lacking a little bit in what I just described. So the leads don't get to the freedom because they've got some holes. They don't, again, do they have a 10, like what kind of business? A landscaper, right? A, chiro, a chiropractor. What does a chiropractor do? They crack backs. They basically charge per hour. My question is, Mr. Chiropractor, do you have a $10,000 product? Do you have a $25,000 product? Instinctively, do you think they do or do you think they don't? Trust your instincts. The answer is no, they don't. Okay, well, before we go and turn on the ads and do our, because what happens hourly? You, you know what I mean? You get in a car accident or you have an issue, you wake up and your back's crazy sore. You go to who? The chiropractor. What does the chiropractor do? cracks your back. What does that do? That gives you short-term relief. What do you do? You stop going to the chiropractor, right? The same way that you go to the dentist, you got to, you know, whatever, like, oh, I better, you know, I'm brushing my teeth and I can kind of feel something. You go to the, you go to the dentist, you get your teeth cleaned. You go, oh my gosh, it has, it's been two years since I had my teeth cleaned. How does that happen? You go to the dentist, they clean your teeth. You say, look, I'm coming every six months for the rest of my life. I'm never letting that happen again. And what happens? You may or may not go back in six months, but that slide happens again. And all of a sudden you go another two hours before you go to the dentist, right? So what happens for you as a business coach? Your client gets started. You have them for a short period of time. They cancel. You got to go find a new one. Does that sound a little bit like the roller coaster of the coaching game? Does that sound a little bit similar to the dentist, the chiropractor, and every other niche that you could talk about, every other client? The answer is yes, right? So, so we are not unique in that way. Uh, the bottom line is that you got to make sure that they've got the business model. The chiropractor doesn't have the ten thousand dollar package, and then he's buying leads online, uh, which, by the way, are very seldom going to work. Okay, because you don't wake up in the morning and go, "Oh my God, I'd love to go to the chiropractor." That's not the norm. But I bet you'd love a massage, right? So when I say when I say go to the chiropractor, you go, I eh, don't think so. But I say, how would you like to have a massage? You probably think that's a great idea. Well, how about the chiropractor advertises massage, has, you know what I mean? Like uses that as the lead gen. And then you take them from massage to, um, you know, to x-ray, to chiropractor, to client and the $10,000 package, right? Do you think that might work okay? And the answer, and by the way, when you put a chiropractor, you speak to them, what's the chiropractor going to say? Oh, I get it. But the massage therapist is just a pain in the butt, right? Well, eh, wrong answer, okay? The and by, by the way, can you have a successful chiropractic clinic without massage? Absolutely, you can. But let me tell you, if you want to advertise, you really want to fill the thing up, massage can be an absolute hack to put everything in fast forward, right? Um, but... The chiropractor doesn't get that and therefore they can't use, you know what I mean? They, they want the leads, but they don't have the right business model is where I'm trying to go. They're trying to get the freedom and it's not a lead problem. It's a business model problem. Anywho, um, anywho, uh, I want to talk about leads, conversion, fulfillment. I'm going to go real quick. If I wanted to go get a coaching client, I would have to generate a lead. What would I do? There's a multitude of different things that I would do, right? Like I would like... I'm, I'm speaking to a business consultant, a business coach whose airplane is close to the ground. It's got a little bit of lift off, but you're at 20,000 feet. It's a total com different conversation that I'm having with you. So if you're listening to this and you're totally engaged, there's a good chance that your airplane's close to the ground. What would I do? Um, and then, by the way, uh, I would do a lot of this if I was at 10,000 feet to get a high-end coaching client. I would look to businesses for sale. And I would go in there and I would pick up the phone and I would send them direct mail and I would get someone to phone them and I would phone them and I would send them a message on Facebook and I would friend them on Facebook and connect with them on LinkedIn and Instagram, but I'm not on Instagram, by the way, but I would like do that. And then um, 
And that's how our, our businesses, by the way, but I am not interested because uh, I don't want to spend my entire life on social media because that is, if you want to get focused, eliminate distractions over dial in on focus, you probably get the, the focused approach a lot quicker. But anywho, I would go to businesses for sale. I connect with them with a bunch of different social media platforms. I would send them a text. I would send them a letter. I would send them a, um, I would pick up the phone. I would ask my friends, does anybody know this individual? And could they introduce me, which may or may not be able to do, but I would go to them with that offer. If they're trying to sell their business, there's a pretty good chance if they're listing it for 500 grand, a million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, that they would like to get a little bit more. I believe that I could help them do that. And I would call them. And and by the way, when a business for sale, oh my God, this guy's not interested. This guy's trying to sell his company, not grow it. Well, let me tell you, it's, it's going to take him 12 months, potentially five years, two years, three years to be able to close that loop, get the thing closed, sold, et cetera. Um, not in all cases, but that would be a good idea. Um, remember, you, you want to build a business that's sellable tomorrow, but it's a business that you don't want to sell. That's the frame that you want to create for your clients, for you, and for others. Um, so anyways, that's Keith Cunningham 101, by the way. But that's what you want to be able to do. Create a business that tomorrow you could get a buyer, but you don't want to, right? That's the frame that you're looking for, not to help the guy sell. Why is the guy trying to sell his business? Because he doesn't have succession. He doesn't understand the succession probably never exited before, and he's probably making a bunch of horrific decisions. And by the way, he probably has a business broker, which is a little bit like the wild, wild west. And there's a really, uh, if you know anything about you know selling a company, a business broker has no fiduciary responsibility whatsoever. So that might not be the right individual for the chiropractor, the landscape, or the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker to be using. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, uh, but I'm very confident somebody's got a business for sale that I can help them in a variety of different ways to be able to get them more. That's somebody that I would contact, right? And I would approach them with an unbelievable offer. I'd get them on the horn. I would get, you know, toes to toes, belly to belly, eyeball to eyeball, or I would do that on Zoom or I would do that over the phone and I would, I would get them as a client. I would also, because they've already expressed the need. They're trying to sell their company. You know what? You know the outcome that they're looking for. Right. And you could you could peer, you know, into their, you know, with some Jedi mind tricks, look in between their ears and have a really good sense as that they're over it. Right. OK. Solve that problem. Why are they over it? Why are you? First question is, why are you selling your company? Again, I want to understand that. But anyways, then I'd also go to um, people who are advertising. And again, I would reach out. I would have somebody reach out on my behalf. I would connect with them on LinkedIn. I connect with them on Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. Um, I would send them private messages. I would send them a letter. I would send them a direct mail piece. I would text them. I would call them directly. I would ask my friends, my accountant, my banker, et cetera, if they knew this individual and if they could connect me. Um, and I would, um, I would basically, um, yeah, I, I would be, if they're advertising, member leads to clients, to revenue, to profit, to cash, to freedom. Well, again, without, you know, why are you advertising? Are you how, how on a level of one to ten? How satisfied are you with your advertising? And then shut up, and then let them answer, right? And then probe them to go deeper, to go deeper, to go deeper, to go deeper. Because remember, their first answer is probably not the real answer. You want to, you know, you want to probe. You want to probe. You want to probe. Why? 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 But anyway, so so I would go to those folks, and much like somebody for sale, I would, you know, how happy are you with your advertising? I can see some challenges. I can see some mistakes. I can see some ways that you can jack that up. I do not see, you know, interrupt, engage, information, offer. You guys know the four steps of building, you know, an ad piece. Um, I would go to it and say, look, I, I don't see an offer. I don't see education. I don't see an engaging subheadline. I don't see an interruptive headline. I can really, like, for goodness sake, you got the name of your company in the middle, you got service quality dependability at the bottom. You got your phone number, your web address um, at the bottom. I mean, this is this is a blown up business card, and this is not, you know, how much are you spending on that app? <laughs> you might want to improve it anyway. So that boom, two, um, and and then if I was more advanced, well, no, I I could be in the sandbox, getting going as a coach and have my airplane close to the surface. Um, but certainly, if I was advanced, I'd be going joint venture. 
real simple. I'm going to an accountant. I'm going to a business broker. I'm going to a bookkeeper. I'm going to a promotional company. I'm going to a graphic designer, a web designer, anybody B2B, right? And I'm basically like, hey, um, what's going, you know what I mean? Like an accountant. If you guys have listened to me. You probably know my shtick there with um, an accountant. But an accountant want an accountant doesn't want to see his or her clients once a year, right? It's a pain in the butt. They want them coming in four times a year, quarterly, 10, 12 times a year, consistently. They don't want to be giving them um, tax returns. They want to be providing them financial statements. But again, the average coach, the average consultant, the average entrepreneur thinks that a tax return is a financial statement. And again, I could wear, you know, I, I could wear a football as a hat, but that would not make it true, right? It would be a football sitting on my head. That's like calling a tax return a financial statement because it is not, right? We run four-day training on how to read financial statements, which, by the way, we're going to be running very shortly. Um, you should be getting into it. Very impactful. It's basically read financial statements. How would you like to be able to find your high-end coaching fees before starting with your high-end coaching client, right? Well, let me tell you, you can look at a financial statement and you would be able to do that. And the magic, you don't need to become an accountant. You don't need to be able to create the financial statement. You need to be able to read the financial statement, which is two very, very, very different things, right? Like the the, the metaphor I would give you there is that um, I don't need to be an accountant to turn, or sorry, I don't need to be an electrician to turn the lights on. I need to know where the light switch probably is. I need to find it and I need to flick it in order to let there be light, right? Financial statements are not entirely different. You don't need to be able to create financial statements. You need to be able to read them and they're not that hard. But anyway, so there would uh, a joint venture. I would go and solve the problem of the ideal joint venture. Um, if somebody's advertising, again, they got a magazine, an online directory, what have you, without meeting them. The problem is they work really hard to find an advertiser. The guy advertised, the gal advertises, and in 90 days, they cancel the ad and they can't get them back on the phone, right? They get ghosted. Happens all the time. Well, what would I do? I would say, well, introduce me to your advertisers and I'll make sure that they never stop advertising. And in fact, if you tell me how much they're spending in the size of their ad or the, you know, what I, I will get them to double their ad spend in the first 12 months is one of my mandates. I can't guarantee it, but let me tell you, that would be my game plan. I don't know. Do you think somebody, you know, selling ads might like the sound of that? The difference between that and, hey, send me your clients and I'll give you 20% of all of my revenue. And if I earn nothing, you earn nothing. But if I earn some money, um, you know, when they pay me, I'm going to pay you a small percentage. Like, eh, you know what I mean? That's, you know, my, my 10 year old daughter could come up with something more exciting than that. That's you ever heard. Again, I always talk about being Santa, not the Grinch. Right. I think that that offer is like Grinch. You do something for me and then I'll do something for you. I like to come in as Santa Claus and that's worked very, very well for me. What do I mean by that? Solve the joint ventures problem and then ask for something. And the same way that when I ask for a referral, I don't ask for a referral on the third call. I ask for the referral in a moment when you had success, that's when I ask for the referral. So it's the timing, not on the third call. That's, that's needle moving, right? Um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's that. Um, I could go on and on and on, but again, just, you know, on the podcast and working with us, you know, on the training, we go through this like crazy. I mean, I'd be running local live events for sure, but I've talked about that so much. I'm just going to leave that there. It's obvious you should be doing that. Um, and again, you got to do a great job though, right? You got to entertain them and educate them. You can't just show up monotone and spit out a bunch of great information and expect them to go, oh my God, this is amazing. Although that actually will happen because you could actually do a really, really, really bad job of a live event. And God knows I did some horrific ones back in the day um, and I still got clients, right? Um, so anyways, so that's uh, joint venture live events. Conversion, um, add, I, I kind of just gave it away a little bit, but in, I want to add value first, right? That's why I like to build a profit acceleration simulator. Add value, show how easy it can be for you to be able to put a hundred thousand dollars into their bank account. Find not actually not put a hundred grand into their bank account. You can find them a hundred grand just using some very simple math. That math is you know like math is not you know a a gray area. Math is black and white. It is or it isn't. Okay, well that's then the simulator basically uses math. 
and the software uses MAP and weighted algorithm. Got 497 million weighted algorithm sequences. Truthfully, we have so many more than that that it's scary. But again, that's just to give you a bit of an idea of the depth and the breadth, of the weighting system that sits there that ranks different things higher um, than others in the implementation to make sure we're doing things in the right order, that you are doing things in the right order, that your entrepreneur, that your coaching client, your high-end coaching client that's paying you 12, 24, 36, 48, $60,000 a year is doing the right things in the right order so that they dun, 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 keep paying you, right? Retention is everything. Um, well, retention. <laughs> Retention might not be everything, depending upon your standpoint, you know. Uh, anyway, you know, I'm going to leave that there, but no doubt you get the idea. As far as business goes, you'd be significant. Whenever I speak to a new coach, they always talk to me about lead generation. And I always just say, gosh, I wish somebody would get on the phone and start talking about fulfillment and then helping the client retention and really following through and over delivering, um, you know, in year two, year three, year four programs. But they're always asking about lead gen. Remember, if I, if I do a Facebook campaign and I advertise um, lead generation, right, I get lots of opt-ins, always lots of opt-ins, right, like more so than any other offer. If I advertise something strategic, like niching your coaching company, um, you know what I mean, like more strategic, I will get less opt-ins, but a higher um, level client. If I advertise something like become the best business coach you can be, I get the less least amount of opt-ins, but that speaks to the foundation, to the core, that speaks to a significantly higher level coach. So guess what? I get way less opt-ins, but I get a way higher caliber of client if I say become the best business coach you can be, right? It's the same when we do, you know, again, we're going to promote some financial training shortly. Again, the high, without doubt, we've done it many times, the highest level coaches um, you know what I mean? Opt in for that training over the others. Um, so again, because it just speaks to that, you know, become the best business coach you can be. Reading financial statements is not sexy. Facebook ads is sexy. Reading financial statements is not sexy. But you want to have a great company, what do you got to have? Great clients, right? So anyway, something to think about when you're speaking at your networking group, talking about accounting won't be exciting, but you might just find that the three people that come up might be a higher caliber and those higher, higher end clients. And that's not to say you should never speak about lead gen. That's not what I'm saying. It is a, you know, it's a foundational principle. It's the first one that I went over here by way of building a seven figure coaching company. You got leads, you got conversion, you got fulfillment. But let me tell you what will stop you from building a seven figure coaching company. What will stop them from building a seven figure business is fulfillment, not leads. But they think that it's leads. Okay, it's the same way that all the entrepreneurs want to get the seven figures, right? It's a stupid goal. It's a horrible goal. Talk to me about profit. Talk to me about margins. That's sexy to me, um, but not sexy to the masses. So I would encourage you to think that through. Um, but anyway, so uh, deliver, uh, provide value up front. And I know that sounds platitudinal and obvious, but my experience is that it doesn't, you know, we've got a lot more Grinches out there than Santa Claus become. Santa Claus. And then, by the way, conversion. Like, you know, you got to practice to improve, not practice to practice, right? Tom Brady, um, you know, back in the day, he's throwing the football. I, I was never with them at training camp or training on Tuesday. But let me tell you, um, he was practicing to improve. Even, you know, a couple decades, almost a couple decades into his career, he was practicing to improve, right? you know, on the wrong side of 40 and he's practicing to improve. My question is, how much practice have you put? How you're opening? If I woke you up in a cold, 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 cold sweat at three o'clock in the morning, could you spit out the opening for your sales conversion meeting? And I'm going to bet no. And I'm going to say that's a bad idea. You see, the reason you, is then somebody that's, somebody will tell me, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to sound scripted, right? And just stop it right? Stop it. It's, it's, that's just you not, uh, well, again, with respect, right? But that's just you copping out, right? What you do is you memorize your script so that what I'm doing, when I'm trying to close you, I'm looking at your body language. I'm looking at your eye contact. I'm looking, I'm looking at body language. And then when you respond, I'm looking at t tonality and the speed and the conviction in your voice versus the opposite, 
right? That's what I'm looking for. So that's why I memorize my opening and my closing so that I can concentrate on other things other than what I'm going to say. You see the magic of that? So you should have an opening. You should have a Q&A process, which that's why we built software. It's all built off the back of Q&A, right? The reasoning behind that. Thinking is nothing more than asking and answering questions to yourself. By me asking you questions, I'm directing your thought. You know, hopefully that's not surprising to you, but that is a 101 of sales and influence and which is coaching, by the way. So hopefully you understand that, but it's a Q&A process. And then my close, same thing. When I'm going to close, I, I need to have that bad boy memorized because Again, I don't want to be concentrating on what I'm, the reason I memorize it is so that I can concentrate on other things other than what I'm saying, right? That's like super duper important. Um, another thing that I'll say real quick is scaled pricing. Um, one of the things that if you suck at, if you, when you can, when you can, when you can sell, you can't coach, when you can coach, you can't sell. Okay. Yeah, that's black and white and not always true, but that's absolutely the, the 80 versus the 20, right? So if you, you're good at coaching, you're bad at selling. And if you're good at selling, you're bad at coaching, generally speaking. Um, those that are good at coaching and suck at selling, one of the things they do is they go, oh, okay, well, I suck at closing. I suck at selling. So they reduce their fees to 500, 1,000, like the low end fees. Okay. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And again, I've said this in the past and we say it in the training when you work with us, what you got to do 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 scaled pricing so because what happens is the best coaches have the best clients at the cheapest rates is what happens there that's the second third fourth order consequence of that dynamic and then the bad coaches and the good salespeople have the five thousand dollar a month sixty thousand dollar clients and i'm laughing but i'm actually not laughing because that, that that's screws up the industry right but what you do um is scaled pricing. And this is good also, by the way, the hotshot salespeople, because they get the opportunity to basically earn their keep before they get to the higher end fees. My opinion, and I know that there's other people out there saying that those that pay, pay attention. The more they pay, the more they pay attention. Look, I get all that. And there's absolutely truth to that. But I just don't, you know, I mean, not my experiences in a lot of ways. And I just don't think that's the right approach. That does harm the coaching industry, in my opinion. Right. You, if you don't know what you're doing and you're not experienced, you got no business going out there and charging the chiropractor five grand a month, 60 grand a year because you're a hot salesman and you can present this in an insane way. Right. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. Um, OK, I'll get off my soapbox there. Hopefully you're, you're that's landing for those of you. And that's again, all of us should be stewards of the, the coaching industry. And I think that you should take it upon yourself to protect the industry and to encourage others to be thinking about these kinds of things. Right. Um, Okay, what's a solution to that? Or what's a, what's a great way for a bad salesperson but great coach to get a $60,000 client? Um, shout out to Nabil, by the way. I could tell a quick little story about one of my clients, Nabil, um, in Australia, legend. Um, but anyway, so he, he basically, I said what I'm about to say to you. I said it to him on one of our group coaching calls. He jumped on back next week. He said, Carl, you just made me 60 grand. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> he's an example of that really good consultant that wasn't so good at sales. And I gave him this advice and it was a game changer. So he wanted to charge five grand a month. And I said, look, do it this way. Make month one a thousand, month two, two thousand, then three thousand, then four thousand, then five thousand, month five onwards. Right. And then give them a little bit of win and some runway and for you to build the relationship, solidify the relationship, really, really bond and get these guys in with you. So before you start charging 60 grand a month to protect them, protect you, protect the relationship, protect the possibly coaching industry. If I got on my soapbox again, um, you know, what I mean, make sure that you're fulfilling. Maybe they're going to follow through and maybe they're not. Maybe the guy's going to have a separation, a divorce, an issue, a drama, whatever. Um, I don't know. Maybe could that be a good way? But he got a sixty thousand dollar client, and and by the way, I believe that he started at twenty five hundred and did it a little bit differently. It doesn't matter. You get the dynamic. You go five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two grand. You go a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. You got your thirty six thousand dollar client. But they've got three months, and if they have some challenges, you could always extend the one thousand for two months, the two thousand for two months. Um, before you get to the three thousand a month, thirty-six thousand dollar client. But by the way, you could get a sixty thousand. The example that I gave you a minute ago, I get a sixty thousand dollar client with a one thousand dollar commitment and a one thousand dollar credit card payment. Right? 
that, my friends, in my opinion, if I go by what our clients, and again, we've been doing this for a long, 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 long time. We'd have clients for well over a decade on a monthly basis. Anybody that works with us, you know, you're basically on a rolling, you give us 30 days notice and you can cancel. We keep people for literally a decade and further who are, if you join us or if you've joined us recently, you're going to see them all on the Facebook group. They've been around a long, 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 long time. So that to say that scaled pricing advice I just gave you, as, as I have been told, is some of the best advice I've done. Um, anyway, so um, fulfill, now I'm going to go. So sales, or so you got leads, you got conversion, you got fulfillment. Very, very quickly, fulfillment. Um, look, fulfillment. The World Series will be won by the team that hits the most singles, right? The World Series was won last year by the team that hits the most singles, right? The same, the team that wins the Super Bowl has less turnovers than the team that loses the Super Bowl. And yes, this is a black and white statement for a very gray dynamic, but go over the last 50 years and tell me how I'm doing. And the answer is I'm doing very, very well, right? The team that wins the baseball game hits singles. This is why the digital marketer falls on his face a lot. And we save a lot of them. We have tons and tons and tons of them as clients. They go in hitting a home run with Facebook ads, let's say, and the client, I said it earlier, isn't ready for the Facebook ads. So the client ends up spending 25 grand paying the consultant, paying Facebook, uh, you know, building some, you know, lead stuff and landing pages, et cetera. And then that's the dynamic, right? Well, again, show me your upsell, show me your downsell. Show me your cross sell. So, so basically compounding, when you double a penny for 31 days, what happens? You end up with over $10 million. Um, that's an example of compounding. It does take time. It does take patience. It does take delayed gratification. But all of those are the foundation of a wealthy individual and a successful company. So you just got to get over it. It's the same when you, when you charge, you know, 60 grand, but you start at, you know, one thing, you could start at 2000, then go to 4,000, then go to 6,000, whatever you know, but, but that would take a little bit of delayed gratification if you're willing to start at a much lower rate, but you get a significantly higher level client, right? Um, that, there's a little bit of delayed gratification involved in that, but compounding, your knowledge compounds, your experience compounds, your money compounds, everything in your life, your sales ability compounds, your ability to complete projects compounds, your ability to show leadership, management, Management compounds, remember money follows management. Um, you show me a bad company and I'll show you bad management. I'll show me a great company and I'll show you good management. Um, and great, and by the way, show me great management and I'll show you great people. If you get a $10 million company or above, you're introducing me to an HR company. You basically become you know, all about hiring. Um, so the bottom line, look, here's what I wanna go at, <coughs> singles. When we work with clients, our clients work with clients, the chiropractor, the dentist, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, we have got a, a lot of the foundation of my software, Profit Acceleration Software, is the Jumpstart 12. And instead of trying to hit a home run with a Facebook ad, you make a 3% bump in upsell, which they don't have. You make a 3% bump in market dominating position, which they don't have. You make a 3% bump in cross-sell, let's say, which they don't have, right? Um, do you want fries with that? You got a, a lawyer. Do you want a will with that? Um, a 3% bump in all 12 areas. Let's just say that. When you bump 3% by 12, you get an exponential compounding return where you just, the only thing that you will say to yourself if you've never done it is how do those numbers get so big so quick? And is that realistic? And the answer is yes. And that saves you as the consultant, especially if you're new, but even if you're experienced, I don't need to go into the chiropractor and hit a massive home run. I've got to hit a single in market dominating position. I got to hit a single in digital marketing. I got to hit a single in upsell. I got to hit a single in cross sell. I got to hit a single in cutting costs. And guess what? When I do that in 12 areas, the results are literally off the charts. And um, that's, that's why our folks stay with us for a long time. That is the foundation of the software. And, and remember, I didn't have to do that truthfully. And if you did our financial training, I'm gonna give you a big, 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 big takeaway. But all you've gotta do, like if you've got a company, the, like Google the average net margins of the average company, say in North America or Australia, New Zealand, the UK, whatever, you're gonna see the number 10% pop up, right? Okay, if your client has 10% margins, and you increase their revenues by 
and then you decrease their expenses by 5%, which truthfully, you actually need this to add up to 11% to get. What happens is you double their profits, double their profits. You heard me correctly, okay? You increase their revenue by 5%, okay? Make some sales. Yeah, actually, and by the way, don't go run a Facebook ad. Go to their existing clients and sell them something small and you'll get that 5% bump, right? So you don't need salespeople and a bunch of new admin and a bunch of new management, and a bunch of new expenses. And then you go to their, you, you can't read a financial statement. Okay, congratulations, that's fine, it's all good. Go to their credit card statement and decrease their expenses. And by the way, dec eliminate, negotiate, decrease, right? Think you can go, they pay five grand a month in rent. Go, you know, go re-up with the, the landlord and see if you can get yourself a small discount, which they may or may not be able to do. But if you don't ask, I guarantee they can't. And that number could be unbelievable, by the way. They haven't done it. Why? I don't know. They're trying to grow their company. Try, they're trying to get to a million dollars in gross revenues and they're not thinking about bottom line, right? But at the end of the day, um, you make that add up to 11% and you double the profitability of that company. Boom. Like, I don't know, guys. Like, right? Like, it, it's just not that hard. And if you can't do that, um, it just look, you, you got to go and do something different. You need to go into landscaping or building houses or <laughs> selling real estate. Okay. Because this is that it's so easy. It's scary. But again, look, okay. If you want to lose weight, guess what? I'm about to put a trillion dollar industry out of business. Okay. Eat less, exercise more, drop the mic, walk away. Yes, there are nuances and there's, you know, I, I don't deal with nuances. I deal with percentages, right? So if the average person does what I just said, they will lose weight. The end, the end, the end. They don't need Jenny Craig. They don't need Oprah back in the day. They just need common bloody sense that you growing a company and doubling their revenue, you know, doubling their profits. It's just math. It's just math. It is not my opinion. It's not, you know, magic. It's not physics. It's just, it, it's math, right? So easy. And, and I say all this and I hope I'm not, I don't mean to be uh, dramatic and certainly not trite. I'm trying to say it in a way so that you, you know, turn me off and just go damn well do it. The chiropractor, the lance vapor, the butcher, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, the family, dad is in the fetal position in bed, right? Why? Because he's not following common sense, he's complicated, and then he's hiring all these people that are complicating the hell out of all this. And it just doesn't, and not to say, look, and uh, Charlie Munger, the late, great Charlie Munger, he says, if you say business is simple, you're stupid, or something to that effect, right? So let's not, let's make sure I don't fall into that. Like, oh my God, it's so easy. Look, it, it's not, right? But it's also not that complicated, right? It's just not that complicated. And, you know, again, fulfillment, goal setting. What are their goals? What are your goals? Okay, open up your wallet and can I see them? Open up your phone and can I see them written? Right? What, what is your goal for revenue this month? What is your client's goal for revenue this month? What's their profit goal for revenue this month? What's their gross profit margin goal for this month, which I guarantee they don't have? Like goal setting, set some goals, right? Time management, 80-20. They know 80-20. The problem is they're not doing it right? They're not doing it. And if you're not doing it, you don't know it. So they'll tell you they know 80-20, but they're not doing it. So then they don't know it. Don't give them the free pass. And the problem is if you know 80-20 and you're not doing it, and then somebody says they know 80-20 and they're not doing it, you'll give them a pass because you got empathy, right? You ever heard me talk about somebody, empathy versus sympathy? If you're throwing up over the side of the boat, um, me throwing up with you is sympathy. Empathy is getting you a glass of water, a blanket, and rubbing your back, right? But I don't start throwing up with you, right? Like, don't buy into their bullcrap excuses. Believe me. Um, so time management, you know, don't, remember, and focus, remember, to get focused, eliminate, I wrote this on my personal Facebook page just recently, eliminate distractions. That'll get you focus more than, you know, trying to get focused ever will. Eliminate distractions, solitaire on your phone, social media, searching cars, searching real estate. I, I talked about all this last week. I want, I want you to be thinking about that. Um, and yeah, so 
three things, folks. I, I lead generation, conversion, fulfillment. It's not rocket science. It's not that hard. I, I also remember Charlie Munger. If you're trying to pretend like business is simple, you're stupid. So I don't want to pretend like it's just all this. Oh, it's just so easy. Just do what I did, right? That's, I'm not that guy. I don't want to. That's not good advice for the average. But I'm very comfortable telling you that you, I am overcomplicating my business. Road Dog is overcomplicating his business. You are overcomplicating yours. And the chiropractor, the dentist, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, who you want to get to start paying you two, three, four, five grand a month, they're overcomplicating it also, right? To say, if you want an example, I just gave you one, just like the guy or gal you know that is a, you know, overweight, um, they're overcomplicating it. Um, and then they're not rubber against the road. They're not just damn well going out and doing it. And they're in their head, right? You're, if you're in your head, you're in, you know, you're behind enemy lines, as they say, right? So don't overcomplicate it. So um, that's all I got. I hope that that was helpful. Um, again, want to give a shout out to um, uh, my pre-show participants who are just absolutely fantastic, specifically Susan and uh, Frankie. But just like I opened them up and they just got, you know, they, they went to the emotional side versus the tactical, strategical side, big, big, big time instinctively, by the way. And I just think that there was some magic in that, that remember as a business coach, you're saving lives, you're saving marriages, you're keeping little Johnny away from meeting stepdaddy and step mummy, neither of which he wants to meet, neither of Mitch, which he wants to have a picnic with, neither of which he wants to vacation with. He wants to vacation. She wants to vacation with mom and dad. Marriages break up from lack of money a hundred times more than they break up over a lack of love, right? So um, get out of your head. Go do it. Hope that was some good advice. God bless you guys. Leads, conversion, fulfillment. Um, go help some business owners. Take care. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. Check us out at Focused.com.